I wanted to do a video about a couple of K-Pro computers that I picked up this past week. I have driven over to Arkansas to meet an older lady who had these computers given to her by the widow of a former college professor. Now, I got them from her and only one of them worked, as you can see. Uh, the top one appears to boot up, appears to work okay, but the bottom one was absolutely dead. Now, it did definitely have some problems with the power supply. Well, does have some problems with the power supply, but also the monitor. The monitor does not even appear to power up, but I decided to crack it open, take a look around inside, see what I can find out, and what I discovered was absolutely fascinating. First off, it was very heavily modified. It appears to be some type of um, modification for speed which is very interesting and as you can see right here there's plenty of jumper wires um, there's even one that goes over to a uh, a ROM now that's actually the BIOS there and that's very interesting because that's not the chip select that's actually the A11 pin which is the highest address pin on a 2732 4 kilobyte EEPROM now the wires that are running off screen there they're going over to the back to a, a grate on the back where there is a toggle switch and what I believe is that's running from that ripple counter over to the switch, which is basically speeding up or slowing down the computer depending upon the um, position of the switch. I think that what it's doing here is that it's actually um, a toggle switch for how fast you want the computer to run. Now, I'll get into that a little bit later because there's something very interesting that I found out. But the short and skinny of it is this computer was pretty heavily modified, but it was not running. It's completely non-operating. Um, I haven't probed around with the oscilloscope yet, but it was dead. Power supply and everything. So I unplugged the, um, uh, the chips that were modded, and I had to replace some sockets and do a lot of work in order to get it back to where it needs to be. But I think I've done a pretty good job. I, I still need to test a couple of things out, and I think I actually need to pick up some new ICs because some of those ICs were dead. But as you can see in this next uh, picture that's about to come up, I, I've, I've done a pretty good job of restoring it. Um, I had to place, like I said, a couple of new sockets in there, and I'm going to have to actually get a couple of new ICs. But for the time being, they, they're at least... Um, back the way that they were supposed to be. There's still that one red wire coming out from where the floppy connector is. Um, the reason for that being is because it's actually hard soldered on there. And I would rather have it uh, a little bit of a insulated lead there than try to clip it off and have it flopping around in the wind. But in either case, at, at least the computer looks the way it's supposed to look. Now I know that it was modified by the original owner. I probably should have kept it the same. Yada, 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 yada. But I'm more worried about restoring this machine back to its former glory. I want to make sure that it gets back as close to possible uh, to the way it was whenever it rolled off the factory. But there's a couple things that are wrong with it. First off, like I said, the power supply wasn't working. So I disconnected the floppy drives. I did some work on the board. And after a short amount of time, I ended up getting a stable power supply. Uh, fairly stable anyways. Um, as you can see, it's holding 4.88 volts here. It's actually fluctuating a little bit uh, between 4.88 and 4.89. Um, again, I haven't probed with the oscilloscope, but I'm assuming that there's going to be uh, quite a bit of noise on the power supply. So I'm probably going to have to completely rebuild that if I were going to take a guess, which I don't know much about AC or building power supplies to begin with, but uh, we're just going to re start replacing parts until we get it back to where we need it to be. But of course, uh, uh, the CRT is still dead, and I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with that. I know absolutely nothing about CRTs. It's not even lighting up. Uh, it does have a glow at the back of the neck on the CRT itself, but that's it. I'm not getting any signal, and of course, I don't know if there's a signal coming out of the board. Again, I need to get the oscilloscope out. I just haven't done it yet. But the ROM is very interesting, and I've actually got an entirely different blog post about that. I'll t touch base on that. I'll put a link below. But here's a dump of the ROM. And the most interesting thing is, is that it's written by a guy named Howard Saltzman of Baltimore, Maryland. It was distributed by a company called Highland Micro Kit. Now, I've done a lot of work, and I've asked around a lot, and I've managed to find at least a little bit of information about Mr. Saltzman. I've got a letter out in the mail to him. Well, it will be going out in the mail tomorrow morning. But I'm trying to track this guy down. I want to find out who this guy is, what kind of ROM he came up with. It's called the Roadrunner um, Custom Monitor ROM. 
and it was distributed by a company called Highland Microkit who advertised in a um, magazine called Profiles. Now Profiles is really interesting because it's got an ad and of course um, I've taken a look at it and of course I'm going to post a um, you know link to the article. The article's got links to the magazine and links to the um, links to the advertisement in it as well but uh, here's a picture of the front of the cover but what I'm getting at though is that uh, it was advertised this guy apparently did sell a few because I've spoken with one guy that actually has used this ROM in the past and he liked it he said he wanted to get a copy of it of course I have posted the binary on my w website in the article and you know if you want to try it out feel free to go over there and download it but it's really really interesting um, I didn't expect to see it there, and I didn't expect it to be uh, set up on that uh, A11 pin as it was. But in either case, there was a, um, a advertisement that was put in the um, magazine itself. It does have a kit that you can buy that is not only the ROM, but it's also a, uh, I guess, a speed increase for the K-Pro. And of course, you'll see that um, picture coming up here in just a few seconds. But um, what I think happened is that the guy that owned this computer, he bought the kit, you know, just, just a little bit, and here's some picture of the kit, but there was a kit, uh, total upgrade, you can get the monitor and, you know, a speed up increase, and I think that's what happened, I think this guy bought the kit, and I don't know if, uh, Mr. Saltzman remembers the guy that may or may not have owned this, um, I'm guessing his name was, um, I believe it's G.L. Wheeler, uh, he was supposed to be a college professor over in um, over in Arkansas somewhere. But in either case, uh, he loved his computer, died sometime around the year 2000, and left these to his wife, who ultimately ended up giving them to a friend of hers. And then the friend eventually got tired of them and decided to let them go after they'd sat underneath her bed for um, about 15 years. So kind of an interesting story but I'd like to find out a little bit more about the software that's on it because I'm not seeing anything out there I'm not even seeing a link to a ROM on the normal KPRO preservation sites so I'm hoping somebody can give me some information about this and if I can't get a hold of Mr. Saltzman himself um, maybe somebody else out there will recognize the uh, work be able to provide some type of documentation for it who knows um, I'm just trying to you know make sure that if this is the last surviving copy that it doesn't go, you know, uh, lost to the history of computing like so many other items have. You know, there's so much stuff out there that's nothing more than folklore at this point, just simply because the last remaining copies have been lost forever. So, anyways, I hope you liked the video. Um, don't forget, my website's going to be linked below. You can go there, check out the blog posts. Aside from that, I look forward to seeing you on the next video uh, commenting. And if you have any questions in the meantime, my email is up and going, so you can drop by the website and uh, go to the contact page and uh, shoot me an um, email. I'd be happy to respond to you. All right, thanks a bunch, and have a great week. And we'll look forward to, I guess, the next video probably coming out in two or three days. All right, have a good one.